mountain she met an old master. He taught her to fight, but after some years, a fire still burned in her. The fire of revenge. On and the pirates. By now, it had become a ritual that after the day's work was done on the ship. Every day the pirates cleaned the decks, they checked the ropes, they tightened the sails, they sharpened the swords. Well, when all that was done, and the pirates were snoring away in their hammocks, Arna would come up to Nancy's cabin for a cup of wine and to hear the rest of the story. Arna found Nancy to be the most fascinating person she had ever met. She was so confident and mysterious, and Anna felt quite flattered by the interest Nancy took in her. The captain must have been about 30 years old, and she always dressed in waistcoats, boots and trousers, and with her curly, hennaed hair, that one flashing dark eye. She was beautiful in a way that made Anna feel sometimes quite overshadowed. Although she too now had some pirate blouses to wear and was experimenting with a red bandana tied on her long black hair, but really she still felt like she was, you know, inside, like a diving girl from a little village. Nancy poured her a drink and continued her story. For weeks I hadn't seen another soul sharing my journey with the deer, the wild pigs, the wolves that I could hear howling at night. Then as I walked up a winding mountain path one day, I came across a man, sat cross-legged in white robes, eating a bowl of rice. He was as old as my father, with a similar long, thin beard, and his long, dark hair was tied back in braids. But then all of a sudden, his hands darted out, and with his chopsticks, he caught a fly in the air. Can you imagine? I clapped my hands in admiration, but he didn't even glance in my direction. Though I must have been the only visitor he'd had in ages. He ignored my questions about who he was or what he was doing here. and He finished his rice and just turned away to walk up the mountain. And I followed him, still trying to get his attention. I was Princess Rana, damn it. I wasn't used to people pretending I wasn't there. I followed him and found that he lived in a cave, sleeping on the ground. I realised I would have to swallow my pride. I picked up the rice pot and I went to wash it in the stream. First time in my life I'd ever washed anything, really. Well, a year later, I wouldn't have recognised myself. Every day I brought in firewood, I cooked, I cleaned, and still, the old master wouldn't so much as look at me. But where else did I have to go? And one day, I was sat by my bowl of rice, trying to catch flies with my chopsticks, just like he did. It was, it was impossible. They were just too fast. And then I heard his voice for the first time since I'd arrived. You must catch the fly in your mind. I said, what does that mean? But he was already walking away. And I sat there by my bowl of rice, trying to imagine what it would feel like to have the little body of the fly between my chopsticks. And I reached out and missed again. But I kept on trying every day. And then one afternoon, I did it without even realizing. I caught a fly in my chopsticks. I looked up and saw the old master was watching me, and he walked off into the forest, leaving a sword behind him, resting against a tree. I was so mad that he hadn't even congratulated me. I picked it up and chased after him. I swung wildly at his shoulder, but he just stepped aside and I fell to the floor. I lunged at him again, and he hopped out of reach. I started swinging the sword wildly left and right, and every time I missed... Just like when I met you, Nancy. Indeed. Finally, I was exhausted. I give in, I told him. Teach me. And he leapt forward and slapped me on the face. I said, hey, I wasn't ready. 
ready or not, the fight is there. The training wasn't anything I could have expected. Once he even attacked me while I was sleeping in the dark. I can't see anything, I protested. See or not see, the fight is there. He taught me how to be quicker than anybody else. I just had to imagine in my mind that I'd already swung the sword before I did it with my hands. I had to believe it had already happened. One day he sent me down the hill and took out his bow and arrow. I didn't even have a shield. But just before the arrows came my way, I calmed myself and imagined that I'd already cut the arrow down in flight. And there it was, cut in half at my feet before I even knew what had happened. Then, one day, I must have been there for about two years at this point, we were training at sunset with swords, and I broke through his defence and rested my blade on his cheek. His face seemed to crack a little, and he gave me the first faint smile I'd ever seen. I flushed all over, Anna. It was like all the love I'd ever wanted for my father was in that one smile. Another year passed, and I was no longer the spoiled princess who didn't even know how to cook rice. I had become a warrior. Life in the mountains was perfect. It was peaceful. I was learning so much. And yet, I thought of the king on his throne, making other people's lives a misery. And a rage burned inside me like a little fire I could never put out. I imagined his face when one day I would return to the palace. How I might cut him down and then pull back my hood so he would know it was me. Well, one morning I woke up and my sword was waiting for me outside the cave by a bag with my bowl, spoon and knife. The only things I had in the world apart from my blanket. But I don't want to leave. You have already left in your mind. No, but I... But then the master grabbed his bow and arrow and I had to run for my life. A hail of arrows following me that I had to cut down as I fled. Was he trying to kill you, Nancy? No. I understand now he was helping me move on. What happens next? I'll tell you tomorrow. Have another cup of wine, Anna. In the next episode, we're going to hear how Nancy began a life at sea and how she became a pirate. My name is Tom Thumb. I hope you're enjoying the stories. On it and the pirates all at sea. Oh, on it and the pirates all at sea. On it and the pirates all at sea. And they'll never come home again. Never come